June 2016, the Brexit referendum alerted us all to the rising power of populism and signaled that Donald Trump had a real chance of winning. Visiting Britain now on the eve of its general election, I felt I caught another glimpse of where politics might be headed in advanced democracies. Democrats facing a resurgent Donald Trump this fall should pay close attention. No matter what poll you look at, the ruling Conservative Party appears headed for a catastrophic defeat. One poll in particular has captured everyone's attention. Conducted by Savanta for The Telegraph, it predicts that Labour will beat the Conservatives, also known as the Tories, by 21 points. A statistical model from Savanta and another firm, Electoral Calculus, translates these numbers into parliamentary seats based on polling and turnout estimates, projecting that Labour will win over 500 seats out of 650 in the House of Commons, and the Conservatives will get barely 50. That would amount to the fewest seats won by the Conservative Party since its founding in 1834. According to these projections, most of Britain's senior most cabinet ministers would lose in their own constituencies, including Rishi Sunak, who could become the first sitting prime minister to be so humiliated. I should caution that other models relying on different data don't expect the results to be this bad for the Conservatives, but they still forecast a crushing defeat. This fall from grace is particularly stunning because in the last British elections, in 2019, the Tories gained a majority of 365, the largest since the Margaret Thatcher years, and Labour had its worst night at the polls since 1935. What explains the Conservative debacle? Rory Stewart, the Tory politician and author of a brilliant memoir, How Not to Be a Politician, argues that over the last decade, the Conservative Party lost one of its most treasured attributes, seriousness. He told me, the Labour Party has usually been seen as well-meaning with its heart in the right place, but feckless, rash, and often incompetent. The Tories were seen as tough, even heartless, but assuredly competent. That reputation has been trashed by the chaos of Boris Johnson, Theresa May et al. But it's more than just incompetence the Conservatives face a problem that afflicts the right almost everywhere. What do they stand for? Since 2010, the Tories presented themselves under David Cameron as the party of traditional fiscal conservatism, which meant austerity. Then they pivoted to Trump-style populism under Boris Johnson, and then to Thatcherite free market ideology under Liz Truss. Recently, the populist hard-right reform UK party led by Nigel Farage, has been climbing in the polls and dividing the Conservative vote, which might give Labour an even larger parliamentary majority than it would already have gotten. As I've argued before, politics is moving away from the left-right divide over economics to an open, closed one centered on cultural issues like immigration, identity, and multiculturalism. As the Tories remain internally divided on these issues, reform presents itself squarely as advocating for a more closed Britain. Assuming that the Tories do suffer a humiliating defeat, it's conceivable that Nigel Farage will find a way to take over the Conservative Party and make it thoroughly populist, as Trump has done with the Republicans. So the right in Britain is divided unlike Republican unity around Trump. So the real lesson may be for the American left. In Britain, many see this election as a negative vote against the Conservative government rather than an affirmative vote for the Labour leader, Keir Starmer. He's not a thrilling, charismatic leader. He has a lower approval rating than Tony Blair had when he won big in 1997. But Starmer has been a brilliant strategist in his positioning of the Labour Party. Fraser Nelson, the editor of The Spectator, a legendary Tory publication, said to me, the best argument in Starmer's favour is that he would handle the country as strategically and effectively as he has handled the Labour Party. Rory Stewart pointed out that by occupying the centre, Starmer has forced the Conservatives further right, where there are fewer votes. Starmer took over the party from Jeremy Corbyn, a hard-left ideologue who faced numerous accusations of anti-Semitism, which he denied. Starmer purged the party of radicals, eschewed any hint of a woke agenda, and has kept Labour firmly trained on the centre ground 